Hey, have you ever wondered if you are pricing correctly in your dog grooming business? Remember, the goal of pricing is to make sure that you are maximizing your profits. You need to stop leaving money on the table, and that is what we're gonna talk about today. Most dog groomers basically price to fit their competition. They try to match the competition. They also oftentimes will undervalue their services and they fail to account for all costs and expenses when setting their prices. And this leads to lower profits in the business. Let's take a look at each one. When it comes to competition, it ends up creating a race to the bottom. You want to beat them so you lower your prices and then they lower theirs, then you lower theirs. And then pretty soon you just keep eroding away all the profit that you have because the costs stay the same and what you have to spend to keep the business going stays the same. So definitely don't get into a race to the bottom with your competition. It never benefits you financially. It also does not account for your business needs. Your business needs are different than their business needs. And if they're basing their pricing off of their business needs, or they're not paying attention at all, that is going to end up hurting you. Because who says that your competition is even profitable in the first place? Because they probably aren't. Now, you also undervalue your business you undervalue mainly yourself because you fail to account for your experience that you bring to the table, the quality of the service that you also bring to the table, and your special sauce. There's something special about you that makes these people want to bring their pets to you to take care of. You have to remember, people will pay for value. They will pay for what makes their baby happy. They want their baby to be happy, so they're going to be willing to pay you more if you're someone that they trust with their little fur baby. Now, when it comes to cost and expenses, every single dog grooming business is different, but the one thing you all have in common is you must account for your monthly expenses and you need to account for your labor hours. Now, this one sounds different because a lot of you are not doing this. We're going to take a closer look at this and show you how to do it. Now, before you will even have a business profit, these two things must be included in your pricing. And I'm going to bet you that most of you are not doing it, or you think you're doing it, but you're kind of not doing it the right way. Now, the first thing I like to go over is something I preach over and over. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have. The number one calculation that everybody needs to know is sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. I want you to memorize this. It's the only thing I ever tell anybody that they should memorize. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. Let's take a look at what that might look like in your dog grooming business. For example, you might charge $75. That would be your sales minus your cost of goods. You're going to see $20 plus $5 equals $25. I'm going to explain this in a little bit more detail in a minute, but these are your costs. It's going to be a labor hour plus any of the material that you use is going to come up with your cost of goods. You're going to have your expenses. You got to set aside $20 out of every sale for those expenses and that's going to lead to $30 in profits. You'll see here 75 minus the 20 minus the 5 minus the 20. Don't worry if you're not quite catching on yet. We're going to dive down a little bit deeper here in a second because these two sections of what I want to point out because this is where most people drop the ball is they do not account for labor hours in that service that they provide and they definitely don't calculate out the right number to set aside for their expenses and I'm going to show you how to do both of those. Now, when we're looking at our cost of goods, some people on their PNL, they currently do not have a cost of goods, or maybe their bookkeeper doesn't want them to have a cost of goods. You do have a cost of goods, okay? The first one is materials and ingredients. Even if you are a dog groomer, let me tell you, you're using some shampoo, all right? And if you put a bow or a bandana on the dog, that's also a material. That's part of that service. When you are providing that service, you use those items and you give that bow or bandana, whatever the case may be. And you might use other things as well. So you do have some cost of goods. Those would be the items that are used during the actual service. And you also need to account for fair labor wage for the doer piece of the business, whether it's you or someone else that you're doing. If you don't have any employees and it's just you, guess what? You're going to pay yourself a fair wage for being the doer. And in most cases, it might be an hour long. So what would you pay a typical person? Not what they would pay you, the business owner, but what would they pay a person to do this? Is it $15 an hour, $20 an hour, $25 an hour? Whatever it is, you need to pick a price point that you think is minimum for the hourly wage for the doer person. In most cases, it might be 15, 20 bucks. All right. Now, why are you including this in your cost of goods sold? 
because you're wearing two hats in your business. The first one is as an employee hat, okay? That's when you're doing the actual service that you provide. And the other one is as a business owner, and that's the profitability of the business. But when you combine both of these, what gets people in trouble is they fail to account the right number to include the fact that they're going to have profit in their business to make more than just being an hourly employee in their business. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Because if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. And if you grow your business, expand your business, you're going to have to hire someone to do that. And what gets people in trouble is they start to hire people is all of a sudden they don't have any money. It's because guess what? You stop paying yourself that hourly wage, but you never accounted for it in your pricing. So there is no business profit. There is no owner's profit. So now there's no money for you at all because there's no money left over because you never priced correctly in the first place. So even if you have no plans to hire anybody, you still want to make sure that you are pricing correctly for the doer side, the employee side versus the business owner side. Now, you might be asking yourself, how on earth do I account for my expenses? Well, there's actually an easy way to do this. First thing you're going to do is if you have a profit and loss statement, it actually tells you all that information right here under the expense column, because you're going to notice there's a percentage. If not, you can calculate out your percent. It's always the total dollars divided by the total sales. It gives you this percentage. In this particular PL example that I'm using, if we take that their year to date number and we take their uh, expenses divided by their sales, they're going to come up with 23%. That just tells you this particular one. You probably have one yourself, but let's just say you don't have one of these. You haven't been doing them. You haven't been creating them. You don't have a bookkeeper. Okay. You're going to go to plan B and under plan B, you're still going to use the numbers that you do. You're going to go through and you're going to add up all of your monthly operational expenses, whether that's utilities, advertising equipment, uh, tools, anything that you purchase. If you have a van, whatever the case may be, you're going to add every single thing up except for the items that you included in your cost of goods. So like I said, if you buy any of those other things for the doing piece, you're not going to include this. This is going to be every other operational expenses to run the business. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take that number and we're going to figure out your percentage that you need to be setting aside for each of yours. So let's just assume that you do five dogs a day, five days a week, and that we have four weeks in the month. Okay. So you're going to do 75 dogs, which comes to 25 dogs because you're going to do five dogs a day. That's 25 dogs a week. And you're going to take that times the four weeks and that's going to tell you your basic rough monthly sales is 7500 Hopefully you followed along. $75, 25 dogs a week. We're going to do four weeks to give us our month. It gives us $7,500 in sales. Now, when you added up all those expenses, you came up to $1,500. And once you have that $1,500, you now know what your monthly expenses tend to run. And you also know what your projected sales are going to be. So if we take that $1,500 and divide it by the $75, it tells us that your monthly expenses run about 20%. And now that you have that 20%, you can use that in our formula to figure out how are you accounting for enough money to cover your expenses. Let's take a look because now we got to pull all this together. Now, go back to the pricing, right? We know sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. So we know we do a dog grooming session for $75. And we also know our cost of goods. We're going to set aside the $20 for the labor. That's what we talked about. And we're going to set aside $5 for materials. It's probably going to be a lot less in dog grooming uh, because, you know, once you add up the little bit of, you're not using the full bottle of shampoo, you're only using a little tiny bit. So in that case, it might be, you know, five cents or 10 cents or 20 cents worth of product on there. And you can do it, say, okay, if this bottle costs, me $10, I can get about five dogs out of it. You can divide the $10 by the five and it tells you how much you can do per dog. Uh, obviously it's going to be more than that, but it will give you a number. So that number might be 50 cents. It might be a dollar, whatever it is. You want to use that as this number. And if you buy bows and bandanas, how much do they cost each? When you divide them out, you buy them in a bundle divided by the number you get, it's going to give you that number. So this number might be $2 and 22 cents. I don't know, but figure out what that number is. I just like round numbers. It makes these examples 10 times easier. So now we know your cost of goods are about $25. Now our expenses, remember, we knew we had 20% to set aside. So we have to take 20% of the $75 and 20% of the $75 is $15. So now sales minus cost of goods minus expenses, we know that our profits are going to be $30 because we're going to take the 75 minus the 20 minus the five equals the 15. So now when you're setting your prices, you can ask yourself, am I setting myself up to be profitable with each and every sale. Now, for some of you, your expenses are way higher than 20% because if you have a vehicle expense or a monthly payment, that's going to really jack that sucker up there. Now, 
I want to make sure that you don't forget your profits do not go straight into your pockets. Just because you made that 30 bucks doesn't mean it's all of yours to pocket and go spend. You don't get to spend all this money. It has to go towards retained earnings to reinvest in the business, to grow it, to buy other stuff. You need to pay your taxes from that. And you need to also take the money for the owner's draw, the money that you're going to keep. And this is why it's really dangerous for you to do sales and just put the money in your pocket. You've got to save for these three things, as well as making sure you've got enough money to pay your bills for those operational expenses, which is why we break it down. Please, whatever you do, please capture your time as an employee in your pricing. Because if you don't, it's messing up this entire flow of everything. And this is why many months you get to the end of the month and you don't make any of the money that you thought you were going to, or you come up short for being able to pay your bills, or you find out that you don't have any money to pay the taxes that you need to do, or you don't have any money to reinvest in the business. It's because you were paying everything in one big lump sum versus separating out the two. All right. That doesn't mean you don't get to write one check because you might be just write one check at the end of the month. But when you're looking at your pricing and when you're looking at setting up your your business, you want to make sure you separate out the two hats that you wear in your business, the hat you wear as an employee versus the hat you wear as a business owner. Because at the end of the day, you want to reap the rewards of being a successful business, not being a successful owner or a successful employee. Okay. It's great that you're an employee and you're making good money, but at the end of the day, you also want the business to be successful. And that's the biggest thing we want to do is we want to make all kinds of money. And we only make that when the business is successful, not just when you do a really good job being a really good employee, making a good wage. All right. Because you wear two hats. It's important that you always know your business numbers and that starts here with your PNL. If you don't have a PNL, you need to try to start getting one put together. And if you already have one, then just become familiar with it. Quit picking it up from your bookkeeper and throwing it in a drawer. You need to look at it and you need to understand it. You need to memorize the calculation we talked about. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals the profits. It's going to help you understand your business and the flow of money through your business. Remember, you wear two hats. You're an you wear one as an employee and that is where you're getting paid fair wages for what it is that you do. And that goes under your cost of goods. And as the business owner, and you only get paid as a business owner if the business is successful. So if you're taking the money out and you're never letting the business become successful, you're never capturing your time as an employee in the business, you're never going to know that. You must know your business numbers. Remember, you created a business. You didn't just create a job for yourself. That wasn't the intent. All right. So if you truly want to have a business, you got to understand those business numbers. And if you want to learn more about your PNL, there is a video here on uh, the YouTube channel for uh, understanding your profit and loss. There's actually a, a playlist as well as uh, a couple different videos. I've, I keep putting more and more out there because I keep teaching it different ways. So you can learn it a lot of different ways, but you can start with this one. It's really going to help you learn that. And if you want to learn more in pricing, there are these two videos here that will also help you with doing your prices where we break it down even more. And if you like what you see, please hit that like button so other people know they should really check out this video and hit subscribe if you always want to get uh, notified when there's uh, new videos for you to be able to view. All right, get out there, go price your stuff correctly, and I promise you, you're going to start making more money.